any children by black women. What was the response from your tour guide? Oh, um, it made a, a bit nervous because there were, I guess, about 40 people in the group. And, um, you know, they do, their tour is pretty set. George Washington founded our country. He was a great man of integrity. He said, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down well, the Nathan, cherry you knew tree. you were going to make up a, you a know. little uneasy now with that you, question. Well, look, I paid my money to get in. <laughs> so you could ask those questions. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And so, but I, I wanted to use that to talk about the notion of family values. Mm. So George Washington fathered these children by slave women who had no control over their bodies, by the way. And so he had these children, and he didn't acknowledge them. So was that family values? But did that tour guide actually give you that information? No. Okay. No. I got that information on my own. I was just wondering. And I happened to talk to a um, black woman who is one of the descendants mm -hmm. of George Washington. And we had a very interesting conversation, and she was working on a book about that. Mm. And so I wanted to, again, kind of bring this contradiction to the surface just to underscore the fact that in America, you know, we aren't always who we say we are and who we like to think we are. And how dare you say that our African-American yeah, men the black are irresponsible. Men. Ab absolutely. I feel you. Stay tuned. I hope you feel us. Open window and passageway to your mind. Question. What do you call a guy who makes a baby then flies the coop? Hi, welcome back to Open Window. Today's guest is Nathan McCall, who is honest. He's an author, and he's honest. And I just like for him to be on Try my show be. because he just tell it like it is. <laughs> he tells it like it is, doesn't he? The name of his book is What's Going On. What's going on in America with black men? On our last segment, we started talking, we, we talked about the father of our country. Right. Which in your book you say, yeah, he is the father of the country, right? Because of some issues. In some more things, ways than one. In more ways than one. Some things that went on. Yeah. I wonder what has happened to the great, what is it, great, great, great grandfather of this particular person that you talk about in the book who can't find it, they can't find his body. He says that that was, uh, the great grandfather was her, was George Washington's son, is that correct? Right, right. Um, this woman that I met and who had been working on a book about it, her great, great grandfather was one of the descendants, one of the black descendants of uh, George Washington. and So they couldn't do the DNA test. It because they can't find his body. Yeah, they couldn't find the body. But, you know, it, 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 again, when we talk about family values in America, and when we use this term, deadbeat dads, mm. uh, which we often associate with black males, um, the issue I tried, the point I tried to make in this piece was that, well, you know, many of the heroes whose images we sanitize, such as George like Washington <laughs> and um, uh, Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. were actually deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. They had children that they not only, um, uh, that they did not even acknowledge. And we have a modern day example of that with Strom Thurmond. They have a statue of uh, the great Strom up in uh, South Carolina, and we learned recently that old Strom was tipping uh, and uh, fathered a black child by a black woman. Mm -hmm. And this child had to grow up with her father being too ashamed to ever acknowledge her. Mm -hmm. So now we have it. Strom Thurman was a deadbeat dad. Mm -hmm. Well, historically, we, we can look at the, the rainbow colors yeah. 
and, 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 and figure things out, you know. We, we're not But the that amazing good. thing is that we can take reality and distort it. So mm -hmm. you have this, re this whole history of white men historically being deadbeat dads, and yet today the predominant belief is that black men are the ones who are deadbeat dads mm. and who are irresponsible. Is that by design? Um, I think so. I think so. And, you know, I mean, I don't say that to generate uh, hatred or anything, but the reality is that there's this image that black men all constantly have to fight against mm. as a result of that perception. Mm. And white men, when we think in terms of what's wholesome and what's responsible, um, you know, white men um, control that image. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, I know that you're a very uh, honest person. Part of your book is airing dirty laundry. And when you tend to do that, you get other folk upset. Let's right. talk about that chapter. That chapter, I did that chapter because it relates to issues in our community, but specifically in the black community, about the importance of us being able to do self-critique mm. and talk about things that are unpleasant, that may be unpleasant, homophobia in the black community, for example, and the ways that it contributes to the problem of AIDS in our community. Mm. Um, because of, I think, the tremendous sense of homophobia, you get so many blacks who may be sick and who may need medical treatment uh, and who might not come forward to get that treatment out of fear of being ostracized mm -hmm. by their communities, by their families, and by their churches. And so here we've got an attitude that's actually maybe contributing to the death of people in our communities. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about it. We're uncomfortable talking about Well, Nathan, that I, think, I, I think that we're just uncomfortable in talking about issues that's going to affect, that possibly will affect somebody else in the wrong or, or make somebody else feel a little bit more agitated, don't you think? Well, yeah. let's, let's talk about Bill Cosby a little bit. Okay. What about him? Okay. That's a statement that he made recently. Yeah. Bill Cosby. And he's got some folk upset. Right. Not only that, some of the things that you wrote in your, book, your previous book got some folk upset, too. Yeah. Bill Cosby, um, in his address at Howard University, I believe. Yes talked about blacks, young blacks, the problem with young blacks spending so much money on sneakers, and um, he, he talked about misplaced values mm. within the black communities, and um, it got a lot of people upset. And um, that, I think, is what some people say is airing dirty laundry. And usually, we don't like for folk to air our dirty laundry. Right because it, uh, it affects us in all kinds of ways. We don't uh, want the other folk over there to know what's going on in our household. Well, we're, since racism, white racism historically has made us very sensitive about any kind of criticism. And so it's understandable. Very interesting. Stay tuned. More of Open Window in just a moment. In America, you are not required to offer food to the hungry or shelter to the homeless. There is no ordinance forcing you to visit the lonely. In fact, nowhere in the Constitution does it say you have to provide anything for anybody. Thank you for all you've given. Imagine what more could do. Guys disappear when a baby shows up. Be a man. Be responsible. Hi, I'm a person that likes to stay on top of events in my community. That's why each week I watch Open Window. It's a community-based program that also is an excellent awareness forum. Watch Open Window every week at these times. Welcome back to Open Window. Our special guest today is Nathan McCall, and his book is 
what's going on? What's going on, Nathan? Lots of stuff. Yeah. And we need to know about it. Oh, yeah. Let's finish talking about airing dirty laundry. A lot of folk don't want to air dirty, dirty laundry because it kind of gets folk upset. You don't want folk to know what's going on in our households. Yeah. And Let's finish talking about Bill Cosby. Well, and you know, there's a lot of debate going on now about whether Bill Cosby should have aired our dirty laundry, whether he should have raised those issues publicly. Um, and I understand that criticism. And the, the, the thinking go the, the the thinking is this, that Bill Cosby said some things that white racists will use as ammunition to prove their point about black people. Mm. And on, you know, on the one hand, I think that's probably true. You're going to get many whites who say, see, you know, Bill Cosby, you know, who's a multimillionaire, has said black people have misplaced values. That's the same thing that we've said all along. Um, on the other hand, I say that you can't let the white races determine your agenda. Mm -hmm. If there are issues that need to be addressed, then there are issues that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, okay. while I might not agree with everything that Bill Cosby said, I, um, number one, I judge people by their intent. And where intent is concerned, Bill Cosby is unquestionable. Bill Cosby gives back to Absolutely. the black communities. Absolutely. They give money to mm -hmm. the uh, AU Center, to Spelman, millions and millions of dollars. Uh, so I know mm -hmm. his heart is in the right place. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, you know, I have felt some of the th same things uh, that he expressed about the need for black people to get serious again. Mm. I think we are so wrapped up uh, with the situation in Iraq that, you know, we have forgotten that there are a whole lot of domestic problems that we need to deal with. Right. And so we've kind of put it on a cruise right now in black community. There's no movement in our communities. Mm. And so I think what Bill Cosby was trying to do is sound a wake up call and said, look, we got some issues here. We need to deal with it. It doesn't matter whether you deal, whether you agree with me 100% or not, mm. but let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad he did it. I'm glad that there is public discourse about it. I'm glad there's disagreement about some of the things that he said. The important thing is that we talk about it. Right. And I, you know, not only that, you mentioned Alice Walker in your book as well. Yeah. You, uh, as a journalist, you get a lot of uh, flack sometimes when you write the truth, don't you? Yeah, sure. I mean, as she, an author as well. Yeah. And she did, um, when she did the book, The Color Purple, and in the book she had this black male character mm. um, <laughs> who was, you know, really cruel and just a vicious person. And so you had many black people who said, see, you know, Alice Walker is doing what white folks want her to do. Mm. She's bashing black men. I understand the sensitivity because black men have been bashed for 400 years mm. on the one hand. On the other hand, are there some cruel and vicious black men? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right. But going back to y your statement before, the intent. The intent. Mm -hmm. I don't think Alice Walker's intent was to bash all black males. Mm. She did a story about a particular black male. Absolutely. You know, and that doesn't have to represent me or all other black males. Let me change the subject a little bit. Your bestseller that uh, we talked about when you came on the show five makes years ago. Makes me want to holler. Makes me want to holler. Mm -hmm. And now this one, that your book is entitled, What's Going On, reminds me of Marvin Gaye. I any connection? It should remind you of Marvin <laughs> Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them were taken from Marvin Gaye's album. Mm. Uh, I think it was pub it came out in 1971 entitled uh, What's Going On? What's Going On? And to me that's one of the baddest albums of mm. all time. It's just seamless because it addresses so many social issues right. go that were going on in America in the 70s. Mm. And if you go back and listen to that album today, uh, you would think that that album was produced yesterday. Mm. 
Uh, and so, and that album meant a lot to me, as you can mm -hmm. see. Yeah, it's on the books, okay. <laughs> because I, you know, I. What's I'm, the title of the next book? The, it won't be, <laughs> it won't be sexual healing. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It won't be another Marvin Gaye title. <laughs> um, but uh, I have, I've got about five titles that I'm playing with for the next mm. book. And so we'll see. Okay, you know, and I'm be. look for I'm looking forward to reading that. But it won't be Marvin Gaye. It Gay. won't be Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have more of Open Wonder right here with Nathan McCall. What's going on? <laughs> This is Vicki White here at Open Window. Thank you so much for watching our show every week. And this is a special invitation to you, our viewing audience. If you have a particular program or event that's coming up and you want us to video it or be there for that event, call us and let us know. Welcome back to Open Window. I am so happy you joined us today. Our very special guest is Nathan McCall. His new book, What's Going On? And he has another one coming out, but he doesn't quite know the title of it yet, but it won't be related to Marvin Gaye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I have enjoyed it today. I really have. So have I. You've given a, uh, uh, um, a really a synopsis of, of something that we need to know to really find out what's going on in America with African-American, especially men. Let's talk a little bit about uh, chapter seven in your book. Faking the funk. Let's talk about that. The middle class black folks of Prince George's County. Right. I, uh, when I lived in the DC area, I moved to Prince George's County and lived there for several years. Prince George's County has the distinction of being a kind of parallel to DeKalb County here mm -hmm. uh, in Atlanta. In what way? In that it has a very high concentration of middle class black folk. Mm -hmm. And so um, they often in that area talk about the potential 